Okay, everybody, well, to start officially, let me say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be in the world. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're here on our second session of our second day with Transforming Community from the Inside Out Global Tally Summit. This is our fifth Global Tally Summit. And the theme this year for the five days is Community Begins Within You. So my name is Sheila Massand. And it really is a delight to be your host for these few days. Um, you might know that after three years of producing and organising the Tally Summit, it's back in 2016 when the Centre for Sustainable Change, CSE, a not-for-profit organisation, they took over the whole thing and then they were really kind and they invited me back to host last year and this year and I'm really, really grateful for that because I love it. So you might not know anything about CSE, or their mission. So I thought it might be a good idea to briefly share with you what that is and why they organised this Tally Summit. So their mission is to establish and support a collaborative worldwide network of individuals and groups who are introducing the understanding of mind, consciousness and thought by a locally led community change initiatives. And if you'd like to find out more and be kept up to date with the newest and latest activities of CSE, um, find out what they're going to be organising during the coming months. They'll be talking about community development through the three principles world, as they call it, and sign up for the newsletter. You'll see the um, link on the screen right now. So I highly encourage you to do that. And just before I introduce our lovely speakers waiting in the wings, Katya Simons and Michael Behan, there are just a few housekeeping points that I want to share with you so that you can make the most of being part of this tally summit. So you'll see on this, on this slide now, we've got the times are the same every day, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. UK. You'll also receive a daily email, which I hope you've been getting for the calls to make sure you've got the link to hand. Um, make sure you whitelist the address that you see. I think it's csc at centreforsustainablechange.org. That's actually the official email address. So whitelist that so that they don't drop into spam and you can't find them. So coming to the, the session today, we really encourage you to ask questions, send in comments, there's a Q&A box where you can do that. Um, type in your question. If you want to remain anonymous, please check that in an anonymous box and then I won't be able to read out your name because these are being recorded. Um, so they'll be sent out to, to people that buy them. So please remember if you want to not have your name read out, then don't uh, check that box. If you'd like to ask your question live on air, like be, come in and actually speak to our speakers, speak to me, and you can do that. There's a button on the top left-hand corner where you can raise your hand, um, and then Charlotte, who's in the background here, kind of coordinating behind the scenes, she'll bring it, you on, as it were. And so, yeah, I said there were, there were recordings. If you'd like to purchase the recordings, there's an early bird special available until the end of the second, in the end of second of March. Um, 79.95 gets you all 10 sessions. Finally, if you know anybody who'd like to benefit from listening to these calls, please let them know about it. You know, we've, we've got right up until the last call on Thursday, so anybody can register right up in that until that time. So housekeeping duties out of the way, I want to really, um, really excited to have Mike and Katja with us. Um, so let me introduce you officially to Katja Simons. I have known Katja for many years now. We met here in Spain, she used to live here. And then back in 2016, she made the decision to take her understanding back to her home country of Germany. So Katja shares this understanding within her, what she calls School of Life in Berlin. And since um, she's also been running a first professional training with nine participants who will themselves be sharing the principles throughout the world. So more on that, we're going to talk some quite a lot about that with Katja, just how that happened in terms of sowing seeds. Yeah, this session I didn't say it was called Sowing Seeds, Reaping Rewards. So we're going to, we're going to be exploring that with Katja. And then Mike, Michael, we had, um, I had the pleasure of meeting Mike very recently as we prepared for this session. I'd never spoken to him before. Really, really lovely guy. And for, actually, he's our first guy on the Tally Summit so far. I mentioned that last time. So it's nice to have some male energy here today. Um, 
So for the last seven years, Mike's been facilitating groups for people with drug and alcohol problems. And 18 months ago, he started a Facebook page called the JAT Club, J-A-T. Um, and that's where I, I kind of knew about him, find out about him on Facebook. And um, there are in-person meetings by the same name as well. So there's regular meetings. And his message is simple, as far as I can tell. And his enthusiasm and passion shows no limit. So I'm really looking forward to having uh, chatting to him now and seeing how this call unfolds. So welcome, welcome, ladies and our first gentlemen. Hello. <laughs> Real pleasure to have you here, guys. Really, really happy to have you here. So Kat is in Berlin. You're in Birmingham in the UK. Am I right in saying That's that? That's correct, yes. Right, Mike. So I just want to, I think I will say ladies first, if that's okay with you, Mike. Is this Berlin. Like yeah, catch it, share with us um, a little bit of your journey. Obviously, I know a lot about it, but for everybody listening, a little bit about your journey and how you've ended up um, being, being able to, to be on this session talking about sowing seeds and reaping rewards. Yes, thank you, Sheila. It's a pleasure to be here. Really exciting because I, I listened into the other sessions and it's really lovely to hear all the inspiring stories. And I, I feel like... Um, you know, I, I was reflecting on how to share the main, like the main steps of my journey to, to make it relevant to people. But um, it's not easy because it's also seven years. Can you imagine? I mean, seven years ago, Sheila introduced me to this by giving me a CD with an interview. <laughs> and that's seven years ago already. And I mean, in one way, it feels like ages, like knowing this forever. And in one way, it feels like it's just been recently. And so um, I, I see if I can, I can sort of summarize it in a, in a good way. But, you know, first of all, I, I listened to it and I didn't understand a word that was said in this interview. And it was George Pransky um, inter being interviewed by Jamie Smart. But then eventually, after five weeks, it really hit me that in one particular situation where I was totally like lost in a, in, in a really bad state, where I, I got to see the principles at work and I fell out of this experience into a much brighter place, looking at my life and looking at the people in my life and the circumstances and everything looked totally different. So I was like, oh my God, that's what they mean. That's what they mean. I could now see what they were talking about for myself. And that made such a huge difference. So I was hooked really. So I started looking into more um, videos and started reading books. And then like about half a year later, I ended up reading, um, I was actually in Berlin then visiting, looking after a friend's house and her cats. And I had a lot of time and was really um, having a great time reading Jack Pransky's book, Somebody Should Have Told Us. And I was halfway through the book and I experienced another shift, which was another huge shift for what I used to feel like, because I, I've, I've not said anything about what I used to feel like, but I was quite depressed. I was very low. I was physically really sick with chronic diseases, diagnosed with all sorts of different things. I, I was in a lot of fear and anxiety in my life. And um, by that time, you know, lots of that was already you know, lifted. And I, I, I felt hope. I felt excited. I was full of energy. And as I was halfway through Jack's book, I actually contacted him and said, oh, thank you for this you know, because I've, I've really seen a lot through this. And can I have it in German? And if, if it doesn't exist yet, can I translate it? Because I want people to, to actually uh, be able to find out more about this also in Germany. So that's where a whole uh, series of, of events started because, you know, Sheila and Jack and I, we got together, we started creating lots of events in Spain where Jack came over, we took part in his, was it four professional tra long-term trainings? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the journey unfolded from there. But one, one main thing that happened that day when I, I contacted Jack was that I had a vision. And, you know, when people, um, if they have a near-death experience, they often say that their whole life 
rushed by like a film, like a, like a quick, really quick film of, of, of moments. And I had that. I had that in that moment when I was, you know, having the shift as I was reading Jack's book. And I, I could see that all the, the things that I learned in my life, like all the professional trainings, all the, all sorts of things that I never really felt like I ever used in my life and all the, all the um, experiences that I had suddenly fell into uh, like a different perspective. And I could see now it all made sense because I could see all those things were leading towards what I would always call like a bridge. It felt like a bridge towards taking this into German speaking countries. So it's a huge vision, really. And I never knew how to do it. I don't know how to do this. You know, it's just like, but when I look back now from, from that time to now, I can see how it's unfolding and it's, it's taking its own course. And I, I, I feel sometimes like I'm not doing this, but it's happening. And so, so, um, you know, nearly two years ago, suddenly I had clarity about coming back to Berlin. And that to me was like, it was totally unexpected. I used to say to my mom, don't expect that I ever come back to Berlin because I didn't want to, you know, I really loved it there in Spain. And then suddenly within five days, I packed up and ended up being back in Berlin, you know. So that that was just like, really magical and I never regretted it and never you know I mean sometimes with the weather I could say oh I would love to be in Spain but that's just you know that's just a funny thought and I never really mean it um but so so I ended up being here and so and I've been away in Spain for 12 and a half years so you can imagine that I was like a stranger in my own city and I have no idea what to do and how to do it and how things work. I lost sort of really, how does it work with self-help groups? How does it work with charities? We don't have as many here as in, in England. And so, so I was like totally new and I, I was like, you know, starting from scratch, to, totally from scratch. And there was no resources except that when I first came now, that's in July, 2016, I actually published Jack's book in German. So we do have a wonderful resource now. And there is another two books available in German in between time. One is Michael Neal's Inside Out Revolution. And uh, we now, and I had my fingers in, on that one as well, edited the um, Relationship Handbook of George Pransky. We, so we got three books in German now. And um, so things started to, to unfold in a way that I thought was magical because when I first got here I thought okay what are, what am I going to do now you know how am I going to do this and then I had a thought and that thought was what would I have liked at the beginning of my journey you know how would I have liked to be like supported or how would I have liked to learn about the principles and the thought was, I would have liked to have an ongoing support. And I would have liked to have a community, which, well, I did have the community, but I would have had it in a more, mm, like, available, more available and, and in, in, a, in a way that I know it's always avail available for me. So this idea with the school of life came to my mind. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to get a handful of people, put them in a group situation and also do um personal sessions with each participant each month so they have their personal support ongoing and i set it up for a year and then suddenly some somehow out of the blue people started to get interested or somebody got in touch because they have read michael neal's book or somebody um i met at the meetups that i did so i started just you know, starting some meetings, starting some conversations, and suddenly I had eight people to start the first school with. And I thought, how the hell am I going to do this? I had no idea how to do this, but then it all happened, you know, it all unfolded, and we had three long weekends together, and then all the, the, the conversations we had, and we have a monthly class meeting, so, you know, all the, the different um, classes or schools school courses, I must say, can come together in that monthly meeting as, 
you know, what I, I feel was the most um, helpful in this was to stay in the conversation. Mm. Stay in the conversation because we are forgetting. We're forgetting what we, what we get to see in those insights and in those moments of clarity where we understand, oh my God, this is all coming from the inside. And the next thing we have forgotten. So I know for myself that one of the most helpful things was to stay in the conversation and to have a circle of friends who talk in the same way because it helps us to remember and, you know, in the case we get lost. So I've done this first school and then, you know, pretty soon after that, there was another handful of people who got interested and ended up doing the school again with, I think it was again, eight people. And they were pretty quick in learning, all of them really. And I then figured that I could be offering to, to change it into, into a more professional way of looking at the principles. And then to be learning through your own grounding also how to share it, how to share them. So, you know, with the second school, I sort of turned it into, a, after half a year, I turned it into a professional training of nine months. And that's still ongoing now till the end of March. So, so um, you know, this is really, really exciting because, you know, they learned how to do a presentation. We've done a first um, little event and we had like about 35 people attending and it was 11 of us sharing the principles and our own stories of transformation. And now in the second step, they started to learn to do the one-on-one -on -one conversations and the, the deeply listening, how much deeply listening, um, I, or the deeply listening I learned from Jack. <clears throat> and it's really exciting to see how they're coming along and how they start to have conversations with others and how how they they learn through their own grounding to be able to to listen without thought on their mind and to to um, start off other people, not you know, put in more seeds in into the into this uh, community. So Yes, yeah, so that's that's my story so far. I, have I forgotten anything? I don't know, but we'll come back to you. Don't worry. I've got... <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. I won't, let you, I won't let you miss anything out. That's great, Katja. Really, really insightful. I love the the magic of the unfolding, and I think you really got across the message of you just didn't really know. You just didn't know what was going to happen, where to start, how it would how it come about. I might might address that a little bit more with you later. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, over to you then, Mike. Yes, <laughs> uh, Mike. Thank you, thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Katja. And I, I I know what you're on about about it unfolding because where I am now, I had no intention for this to happen but um i suppose like 12 years ago i developed a, a bad drink it was a very bad drinking problem and i went into aa for a couple of years um i didn't like it too much because they kept telling me i was powerless and i didn't feel powerless and i had a bit of a breakdown i suppose you could call it a breakdown or it was a spiritual insight i'm not quite sure but i remember the day and it was like my head exploded. Uh, you know, I, I really, really wanted a drink and I was battling it. And I can see now that it was my thoughts and that. And um, I just, um, well, it's very hard to put it to words. But from there, um, I've never wanted to drink again. And I thought, well, what's this? What's going on here? Like, you know, so I, being a good Catholic boy, I went back to my religion. And that didn't last long. Um, and then for the next two or three years, counselling courses, being counselled, actually trying to become a counsellor, all this type of thing. So it was a journey to find out, you know, what, what was going on. I was lost, basically. I was lost. And then I started uh, um, facilitating groups for um, a thing called Smart Recovery, self-management and recovery training, which was an alternative to the 12-step approach. And it was in one of these meetings where a lady um, who usually didn't, um, you, you know, she looked quite down, but she looked quite happy. And, and I said, oh, well, what's happened? And she said, oh, Mike, you know, I've been to see uh, counsellors, psychiatrists and everything, and they keep taking me back and all this. And she says, I've been to see somebody called, uh, somebody, a three principles facilitator. 
And, and, and they said, well, why did they keep taking the scab off the wound? Why did they keep poking the bruise and all this type of thing? And well, that got my interest up, you know, so uh, three principles then. So every book, every video, <laughs> you know, I could lay my hands on. That was about five years ago. And um, so I, I, I got this and I was working in sort of uh, addiction centers and I was, this, this smart program was based on the REBT, which is a forerunner of cognitive behavioral therapy. And I just, I couldn't do it anymore because <laughs> I thought, this, this doesn't make sense to me now, you know, because people say to me, what's the difference between three principles and CBT? And, and I don't know where I've heard it, but I, I thought, well, CBT is like an intervention when you've got the problem. Whereas three principles is telling you, you know, it's upstream of that and you are creating the thinking in the first place and all this stuff. I think. So I went to the addiction centre, you know, the manager, and I said, look, I've got something else that I'd like to talk about. And she says, what is it? And I says, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I says, I don't know. I just speak. But I've started using it in the groups and people seem to be interested in what I'm saying. And uh, she says, well, come back when you do. <laughs> you know? And I said, okay. So I thought, so I went and hired a church. Because there was about five or six people who liked listening to it, I went and hired a church. Well, I had a church hall. There was a friendly vicar who gave us a church hall. And we spent some cold January nights in that church hall. But um, I'd come across um, The Serenity Principle by Joe Bailey. Fantastic book. And uh, we used to do passages of it and this type of thing. Then a local charity where one of the people would attend it heard about what we were doing and said, well, we'll give you a room, you know, and uh, it had a heater. <laughs> <laughs> so we went in and uh, I just started talking about what I knew. I've had no formal training as such, but it's just my insights of what, what was happening to me because it, my life started to make sense, especially, you know, listening to Sid Banks's tapes and things like this. And I thought, ah, oh, yes, now this makes sense. So I, um, for, the, for the next two years, I had a flip chart. And if you can imagine, I didn't approach it sort of mind consciousness and thought because somebody who's in, the, say, their second or third day of crack cocaine, you start talking about mind and consciousness and, you know, it, it didn't happen where everybody understood thought. So I said, okay, that's the starting point then. So I do the flip chart and all the, uh, I nicked a bit of Joe Bailey stuff. <laughs> so I said, do you understand this? And do you understand that? Yeah, I understand that, don't understand that. So the chart built up over, um, uh, over a period of a couple of years. And um, that's sort of how it came about. On a personal level for me, I suppose, Reading The Power of Now, but which was Eckhart Tolle, and, and that, that one quote in it with the observers of our thoughts. I mean, that, that, that was before I come across it. Then Sid thought, you know, and I thought, okay, that makes sense. So my presentation that I do in, I'd say it's, a, it's like an introduction to the three principles, if anything. So when I go into these centres, I've, I've, I've put it around three points. The only reality is this moment now. And I've built up sort of like little videos and things about that. We're not, we're, we're not, we're not our thoughts, we're the thinkers of our thoughts. And our feelings mirror, mirror our thinking in the moment. And that's enough, actually, to get people so interested. So it was like, I was, I, I, the analogy is like I've, I've got, got them by the hand and walked them into the shallow end. And I said, like, it's as deep as you want that way, you know. But some people will say, no, I like it here. You know, they choose to stay there for a while. And then they, they might go, and it's even when I look at what I've done over two years, and, I, and I, I've gone past that now, but, but I, t I try and stop myself, because every time I change something, people say, well, what's happened to that one? I understood that one, and understood. So I think what's helped me is by keeping myself, um, by not being formally trained, if you want to put it that way, and just doing it the way I did, and the way I, I came about the three principles and talk about it, then people have gone on to courses then themselves. Um, and it's like the one person said uh, they'd gone on a course, but if they hadn't have been listened to what I'd have said, then it, would have, it wouldn't have made no sense to them. So 
just from there then, I thought, okay, let's keep that as it's going on those three things. There's about, say, 10, 10 flip charts altogether, which is now on PowerPoint, that caused me to put it on PowerPoint. <laughs> and, and I suppose, and then the also big insight for me was like, I listened to Sid, Adishante, Muji, all these great spiritual teachers. My other great big insight is they're all saying the same thing. And what they're actually pointing to is that we're all okay, you know, and we're all okay in every moment. It's just the innocent misuse of our thinking. We don't see it. And I thought, oh, right. So that was my the, the big insight for me. And and like I do, I do, I'll do a chart of we're okay and wisdom in there and all this type of thing. And outside there, I'll set sadness. And outside there, drink drugs, food. And like a point to people, a point to that, you know, you drink your drugs, your coke. I said, they're all symptoms. The cause is you don't love yourself, you know, at that level. And so I try and point, throw from thoughts, I try and guide them then through into their, their wholeness, you know. And I'll even say, like, when Jesus was asked, where's the kingdom of heaven? And he said, it's inside you. When the Buddha was asked, how do I find peace? He said, look within. So all these great people and all these mystics of the past, I suddenly realized what they were saying. And I suddenly, it tied in with that little bit of a breakdown I had or spiritual experience. And then everything started to come together then. And I, it became more fluid. And like when I go into a group, you know, I never know what I'm going to say. And I don't even try it. The charts are there as a good guide for me because I'm a terrible man, as you'll know, Sheila, going off on tangents. <laughs> but I suddenly thought, yes, this is it. And so that's and, – and, and then, like, 18 months ago, started a Facebook page. But, of course, there's not much um, three-principle stuff out there, you know, that you can do on a daily basis. <laughs> so we're, we're looking more towards, um, you know, a well-being site. And I, I shove in Sid and, you know, and, and, and all the, the luminaries of the 3P world when I can, you know, to sort of get people to say, well, what's, so they question, what is this three principles? So that's that. So from that, we formed the charity. And, uh, and from there, I've gone in now. Like I say, I was down at a private rehab today, done a presentation down there, and that's gone down very well. So we hope. I've also gone into um, HR, you know, human resources in, in companies and um, brought it into there. Um, I've done a couple in Winston Green Prison and they, they, they went well. So I, in other words, like Katja said, I don't know where this is really going. <laughs> but I don't care really because I just, you know, if the phone rings or the email comes through, yeah, let's go and do it. So like today we just go down and we do what we do so it's it's um you know I, I would say thanks to people like ian watson because he has been my sort of mentor through this is that um if i do get a bit lost over the years i'll say well what about this Ian? and he, he's been very good and yeah. also like deborah simmons she does retreats and like mm -hmm. the ladies who come to my group or, or not, even the men you know if I can get them interested and they say where this comes from, I'd say, well, she, she does a retreat down in Devon. It's beautiful down there. And she's just done one. And people are changing, you know. So that's that's my story. Wonderful. Wow. Well, you know, you've both shared so much. <laughs> I don't know where to begin. It's like you've just thrown it all in there, thrown it all in there. <laughs> like, I've I'm not going to be able to go slowly with this. It's like, whoa, now I need to take a step back. But I mean, you've shared so much wonderful, wonderful, um, I don't know what to call it, just inf well, not, not information, but your story about how this has unfolded for both of you. And I, want to, I, I, I think what I want to do, do is like, take us back a little bit and look at this, this topic of sowing seeds, reaping rewards, and the overarching topic of community begins within you. And I wonder if, so I'm going to go to Katya now, just kind of take it in turns. Just if, in terms of community begins within you, Katya, how do you see that in terms of what happened for you? Now, I know you've talked about it was unfolding, but I'd love to hear just a little bit about the internal, if it was at all, and the intern, the, what was going on internally for you, because 
I think there's, there's many, many, there's lots and lots of people out there that want to do the work that you're doing, for example. I mean, to go from nothing and then start a school and teaching the principles, that's, that's, for me, that feels like a really big step. And then there'll be people that um, might want to do that. And then there'll be people who perhaps just want to go to their local homeless shelter or, um, you know, go to, to uh, well, the, uh, the addicts, if you like, and start sharing this. What, what, well, that's what I'm looking at now, really. I'm thinking about people who want to do this work want to share the principles in communities, what's the internal, what was the internal journey for you on some level? I know it's not, we're all different and it's going to be different for everybody, but I think it is interesting and I think people could be curious about that. Was it difficult? Was it easy? What did you come, you know, in terms of internal, maybe and external too? Where did you start? Well, you know, I think that you know looking back there was a point where i i had a knowing that i could be sharing this now i was sort of ready and you know and you know you know well that i i had difficulties at the beginning to keep doing my job because now the principles were so far more powerful than anything that i had that i had done um with people you know to help them because i at the time when I came across this, I was working as an alternative therapist. I was doing all sorts of um, holistic uh, therapies. And, and, and when I came across the principles, I saw so clearly be because that was, that was like the, the, the foundation of all other approaches that were in the form that were sort of trying to change something from the outside. And that didn't make any sense to me anymore. And I, I actually took on a loan. I took the time off to be able to sort of come to this sort of, it's a wrong word. There's no qualification, but you know, there's no other word for it. Um, to be able to, to, to do this as my, as my passion, as my job, as what I wanted to do. I knew that pretty soon, right after the first shift I had. But still, there was a point um, where I felt like I, I could throw myself into, into, um, into sharing this. And I, I, can't, I can't say that was still while I was in Spain. And, you know, I, I used to work in English and online a lot. And um, there, there was like an internal actually there was there was an insight where i realized that i don't need to know anything there was there was this it sort of freed me of having to know anything and i was able to 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 fall into not knowing and knowing that something would come through if you know if if you just open your mouth or if you put yourself in the situation somebody said that earlier you just you just show up yes some who said that janelle said that you just show up you you sort of and then I and I, I gave a Spanish talk at one point and my Spanish was quite poor I, you know not as as fluent as my English and and I could um, understand a lot but speaking Spanish was still like a you know like little children's language and I ended up doing giving a talk once and um, I couldn't believe the words that I used because I, I, I was like stunned because it was not my active vocabulary, but it, it still happened that I was able to express myself in such a beautiful way that people heard me and, and I was able to communicate in that. And then that was the first time where I really felt like, oh my God, there's something going on that I am helped. It's not me who's doing this. And throughout the beginning of the school, you know, when I get caught up or got caught up and I still do about the, how do I do this? How am I going to do this? And I get nervous and, and I, I actually don't know how to do this. I get insecure and all that. But, you know, then I at some point always remember you don't need to know anything. And then I can just show up and, you know, deliver something that's way beyond me and and so i think uh, when you ask for what does that mean you know that you that it starts within you i think it's a realization of how the system works if, that, if that's really seen deeply then you can give yourself back to the system and the system works through through me in that way 
and oh my god have i learned a hell of a lot of things since i since i started this journey i mean i'm learning probably more than the students do <laughs> i mean really i mean and and it's like i don't know it, it it's it's such a magic that when you when you just show up really and and um Sometimes when we are not well ourselves, we get down into some sort of thought and we don't know how to do this. And if I can remember that I don't need to do anything, but just sort of do what occurs, then I get back into the flow. And then, you know, all those magical things happened in this flow. Hmm. What else did you ask? You asked a second question. <laughs> don't ask me, I don't remember. I was, I, was asking, I was asking about sort of the relevance between community begins with you and sowing the seeds and reaping rewards and how, how you saw that was connected. Um, yeah, there's one more aspect to that, you know, because when you, when you, when you are in a, in a good feeling yourself, you actually radiate that and you, you meet people because they feel that, they feel that. And I, the best example was when I first, you know, I had just come back to Berlin and I went to, um, you know, go into the, into town, uh, as I say, you know, and I was traveling on a train and I sat next to somebody who was on his phone and I was on my phone and my phone at that time was making funny noises and I didn't know how to turn it off. <laughs> So we started talking and it turned out he was a lawyer or he is a lawyer. And I said, oh, great. Do you do divorces? He says, yeah, yeah, I'm doing family law. It's like, oh, great. You know, could we meet, you know, because I've got, you know, I wanted to start my divorce procedure, you know. And so the whole, the whole uh, thing started off with a conversation. And ever since then, we've, we've had a great relationship uh, in, a, in a way that we helped each other. He did my divorce and I did some coaching for him. So the whole, the whole thing, you know, I didn't have to pay any huge bill because normally you get a lawyer to do, to do your divorce, you pay for, you know, you, you, you pay, um, yeah, big amount of money. So for me, it was just like a gift and it only happened because I was in this sort of light feeling of being in the moment and, and allowing things to happen. And so I've, I've had lots of, of, uh, chance conversations with people that ended up coming to my meetup or you know or even ended up in the school um so the the thing is that it starts inside and shows outside and creates that sort of possibility to connect with people that you would probably never talk to if you if you hadn't you know the feeling for it mm. brilliant <laughs> yeah i love i mean i love your story I, obviously i've known it for quite a while but i love the the, just the natural unfolding of it, if you like, and how you've, you've um, so, so, I mean, that was it, the, 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 the sowing of the seeds, like one by one, you found people to come into your, into your school. I just think it's a, lo a lovely story. And so, you know, to start the first school in Germany ever, amazing, amazing. From nothing to something, from nothing to something. That's how it works, mm -hmm. right? From nothing to something. I've just seen that in, um, not in the Q&A box, but on our chat, Lily, Liliana, I said, beautiful, Katya, love what you're sharing right now. And then she said, Mike, I love how you found your way to do it and how you keep things open to change as you do it. So really, Mike, do, do you want to answer that same question that I asked Katya in terms of, um, yeah, community begins with you. I know you might have answered it already in... Um, um, well, well, you see, like my 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 aim, I suppose, really, if, if I can go back, was um, addiction. Obviously, was very, you know, my crutch all my life was a drink because I was a very shy. <laughs> can you believe that? A very yeah. shy child. <laughs> no, yeah, and um, and uh, so as soon as I found alcohol at fifteen, you know, I mean. I, uh, you know, I used to, discotheque, do you remember discotheques? I used to hide in the corner and then, you know, I'd have a drink and I was John Travolta then, you know, I was, I was out there. So I had that all through my life. And then when it was taken away, uh, the first two years was really, really struggle and difficult. But um, I, I think what it was, is like I was, I mean, the fellowship, I think, of uh, AA is fantastic. 
fantastic organization but it's the program i don't agree with which is the 12 steps and if people are not familiar with that i mean the first step is you admit you're powerless over alcohol and you hand it over to a higher power well my higher power handed me back and said a major perfect now get on with it you see so i wanted then and i thought i wanted something out there that people had a choice now, if you want AA and all that goes with it, fine, but there was no, no alternative. So I could see the three principles could fit this, um, this, this gap in the market, if you want. And so what I was trying to do was get jack clubs going that people could come. And it's funny, when I, if I have a group, I never ask anybody what's wrong with them. I'll say because, if, if, you know, if, if you can see, you know, how, how you're complete anyway, you know, you, 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 you won't need to go out and do these uh, maladaptive behaviours. You'll, you'll be okay, you know. So I wanted, I thought, if I, I, I went into centres and, and then I was always looking for people who shared the vision. And it's like there's a, there's a great chap in uh, Birmingham now, Mark Spooner, and he started a, 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 a sort of like a jack club on a Sunday. Now, that sort of like started itself. I have nothing to do with it, you know. So it'd be, it'd be great if it could organically grow, you know, where people could come, you know, and just be part of a community that told them how powerful and awesome, I'm sorry using that word now, but powerful and awesome they are, you see. So I suppose that's what I really wanted, you know, if it's a community thing, is to give people a choice that, they, that there is something out there that there are like-minded people. And the funny thing is, I've started one of them up in, in a centre up in Dudley, and in the last few months, I've had an anxiety group join us. And there's about five or six people who turned up, and they haven't got any <laughs> sort of addiction problems, but they came in. And as we know, the three principles is for everything. And they come in, and, and as I say, we never mention what's wrong with people. I mean, basically what I'm saying, I was ill, you know, what was out there didn't work. I come across something that does. I'm going to talk to you about it. And if it helps, you're fine. But if not, you've lost nothing. So it's motivational as much as anything else. And, and, and there is a growing community within Birmingham now and, and Dudley and Coventry. There's some lovely ladies down there. But, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's starting to get traction. And that's, and we all support each other. And the Facebook page is all very, you know, people are in touch with each other. And, like, um, hopefully we can get, well, there is weekly meeting, you know. So to get the community together, an alternative out there, and it will happen. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it will happen. I suppose. So, so you give you, you talk about Jack Club, which stands for just a thought, right? So you yeah. just just a thought club. So that's is that that's something that you created? Yes. The, 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 when when actually now it, I can it's that's how it appealed to me about four or five years ago. But I can just you know it's all thought, but I can't change it now. <laughs> You know, it's all thoughts, you know, but just sort of stuck. And it's got a nice mm -hmm. ring about it as well. So, yeah, and, and, and but, you know, as you know, in the three principles, I'm trying and my heart is not to make it about me. You know, it's, it's, it's about the three principles. Mm -hmm. and I, I just find that if I keep it as simple as I have and, you know, introductory if you want, but just get people to go what what do you mean <laughs> so i just find myself all, all i think i'm is a pointer i'm just pointing and some people it's like a light switch you know i've seen it happen people you know you've only been speaking half an hour and it's like the light switch has gone on and you see visibly you know mm -hmm. or some people it's a dimmer switch it was for me it's a dimmer switch before i've suddenly found out what oh my god you know so it's 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 just facilitating a, 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 an area or whatever, what's the word I'm looking for for people to just sort of get in get, touch base with themselves because I say to people I'm not telling you anything new 
you all know this. I said, do you remember that lovely feeling you had when you were up to five years of age in the moment running around? I said, and then we got conditioned, you know. So I, I, I get very um, into it. <laughs> you know, I get very passionate about it. And I, I suppose I'm the opposite of Jack, of Jack uh, Pransky's approach and your deep listening. That is totally, I can't do that. <laughs> I am, I am, I'm loud talking. <laughs> and I just, for an hour, I just, and, and I just go and everything that comes into me, I just let it flow. And and it, 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 and I mean, people, I say to them, you know, when they say, oh, you know, my life's different now, I'll say, and it's always the same, what did I say or what did I do? Because I thought if I could can it, you know, it'd be great. And they say, I don't know, I just feel different. So I suppose in the three principal world where people are out there, and I know it's about like the, a lot of the time is get feeling relaxed and, and deep listening. Mine is the opposite but it works and if that's the case then they do then go uh, the ladies of them gents have had they go on the courses and it's a wonderful continual learning process and you know and they it's just beautiful to watch so i just see my job as is i always remember sid bank saying that he just go around tap people on the shoulders and say wake up you know well, I don't. I shout in the rear. Why? <laughs> <laughs> but you know. So I, I, I just, I just. I mean, I, I like I said, I've only recently met you, Mike. But my, my take on it would be, you're just such a lovely, lovely being. Thank that you. it doesn't matter what you say. I think people are just going to get that feeling from you and pick up on you. That, that's my take on what I'm, what I'm experiencing right now it's just like you're obviously so enthusiastic and so passionate and you've seen something so wonderful for yourself that people are definitely going to be curious about that yes is, you know gazi catches nodding her head as well i think that's the that's that's the, that's how it works right so to me as well when you say you know i don't have that deep listening i just talk and it runs through me to me that says there is no right way, right? It's like, it doesn't matter. When people are ripe for insight, they're ready for insight. And it doesn't matter what we say or what we do, that's going to happen on some level. And that kind of points to what Katya was saying earlier on as well. I don't need to know. I just don't need to know. I just yeah. turn, up, turn up, show up, right? You show up and see what happens. Keep the conversation going, like Katya said. Just keep, keep it going. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank, thank you. I was going to, uh, I mean, what I was asking about the Jack Club because what I was thinking in terms of you said you wanted, you didn't want it to be about you and want this to spread. I mean, do, when you say spread, because I was thinking, is, it, is anybody allowed, if you like, inverted commas, to open a Jack Club anywhere in the world? Would you? Uh, yes. Yeah. Great. I mean, it, 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 all the Jack Club is, is my take mm. on the three principles. Mm -hmm. Um. I think um, I, I don't know. I mean, like like um, when Mark Spooner does his, he does it completely different to me. Um, and um, you know, I'm I'm flip chart man. This what's it? This is how I do it. But Mark has it, got very deep understanding. And and if you if you read the write ups on the Jack Club of Average Group on a Sunday, I mean, people love it. And him and, and and there's a guy who's joined me now, Craig Linton, and these these guys are the future, I think. And these guys um, sort of uh, can really get in at a nice, lovely level that people can understand. So if somebody else in in, in some other country wanted to start it, by all means, you know, um, I think all I ever said was keep it the Jack Club, so people know what it's about. But mm -hmm. I I don't you know I don't own it. And I don't want to own it. You know, it's just that uh, if we can keep the community together and growing and all keep in touch with each other and, and like whatever way you want to do it. I mean, I've got a lovely lady, Christine, who's joined me and she only has to sit there for an hour and talk and people are mesmerised. You know, so that's her way. And uh, whatever way suits you, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. As, as I think like Katja says, keep, Let's get the conversation keep going, and people's natural curiosity, and and some people are, are, are attracted to Mark and Craig's group, or they're, they're attracted to mine. It doesn't matter, 
because we're all together. And you see, the, the basic thing is, is spread the message. We do not have to suffer. Mm -hmm. That's the message. And however we get it out there, fine. Yeah, I that's what keeps us inspired in as doing the conversations because if something's happened for us and we really, and as you say, we see the suffering and we don't want that anymore. So I'm going to jump to Katya now. And on that note, I know that you've also started in Germany um, a website. Like, like a, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is like you want it, you kind of, the intention is to be a central hub for German speakers, is that right? Do you want yeah. to talk a little bit about that? And how that, again, how that came about, this is, this is more sowing seeds, right? This is more on the, top, on the topic. Yes, <clears throat> so yeah, it, it, was, it was also not planned. It, it sort of happened, um, but it's quite funny because one of the guys who's in my school, um, he heard me say, and it was more like a, you know, how, how I said to, to the group, I need a sponsor, you know, I would really love to have premises that would really suit us. And I would really like to do some advertising and, you know, reach more people with things. I need a sponsor. That's what I announced. And he heard that and he came to me and he said, oh, Katya, I, I can be your sponsor. And I thought, yeah, great, you know, but he said, well, I, I might not be the sponsor in the way you're thinking about it right now. But what do you think about the idea? I could be helping you to set up a website that, you know, when people search for, for um, information about the three principles in German, I mean, he said to me, you know, you're found, but it's really not, there's not enough information there. You know, how do you think about that? And I thought, great, yeah, what shall I do? You know, I, you know, yeah, let's do it. So within four days, our website was, first draft of the website was live. So he told me what he needed, you know, and I wrote it. So I, I just sat down and I wrote the, the, the copy. So he would say, okay, now I need some stuff about Sydney Banks. Now I need to know what is it? What is the three principles? Now I need you to give me some little um, metaphors or stories to point to them. And so we, we sort of, we, we had regular meetings and we came up with what would need as a next step, as a next step. And then somebody joined us for a while who was doing some sketching. So um, there was, there was the visual sort of aspect to, to make it, make it look nicer and, and, and easier to read and all that. So suddenly we have a, a website and there's events can be promoted. Coaches can be listed. We have five coaches now. And, and, you know, the thing is that it's sort of there. It's a basic information. It's been found by the search engines. If you go into three principles in German or whatever, all different variations, it's, it's been found and people started to subscribe there and then I did a workshop once where they needed a PowerPoint presentation. So I ended up doing a quite a visual sort of little comic about stress. So we gave that as a, I, I, you know, together with the girl who knows how to draw properly, she, she, she sort of brought it all to a nice standard and we, we offer that as a, as a download. And I was looking at it today actually again, because, you know, somebody contacted me and gave me really positive feedback. So I looked at it again and I thought, oh my God, I had forgotten that we have this as a resource and maybe I can, I can sort of promote a bit more for people to actually get it because it says all that somebody would want to know about the principles. It's pointing to the, to, you know, to the places where we can see the misunderstanding in our daily situations, you know, because how can, for example, there's illustrated in how can one in the same situation appear like, um, really terrible or really funny you know you miss the bus it can be a, a huge drama and a problem or it can be just humor coming up about having missed the bus so how can the same situation be having two different uh, experiences so this is pointing to how it really works and so that's really genius but the whole website thing we we have a vision um, to be um, having it like 3p movies um so that we're going to have interviews and 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 videos on there we have a blog already but it's not very active yet so it needs a little you know put put in a little more so that it turns into something that um that becomes even more uh useful so um 
yeah. Right. Yeah, so, so it happened, really. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. I've just, I've just seen a question come in for you, Katya. Um, she's, it's from Kletia, and she's asking, have you met Jan Buck yet? B-U-C-K. We did the Clarity Coach program together. Yeah, I, know. Yeah, I know Jan. Oh, actually, I've got news, and only Jan and I know, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it now. Oh, Jan. Oh, but okay. <laughs> in, in August, uh, Jan and, and I, well, mainly Jan, he's planning a, our first proper 3P conference, and we've got dates and a venue book for that uh, last weekend in August, 25th and 26th, I think of august that's yeah. really exciting we are planning to have 50 60 people come in and attend for that Brilliant. So, yeah yes i am in touch with him <laughs> mm -hmm. oh i also you know that's another thing i do i i do the school but i also uh, organized uh, or initiated and really you know we run it as a group as a little mastermind we we meet every two weeks you know wednesday mornings we're meeting together and we're having we're just there for conversations for helping each other out for inspiration for you know celebrating when things are happening and so this has been really really helpful so i can only recommend that really you know stay in the conversation you know even between us and jan is, is part of that as well so yeah right and so, Clessia says, awesome congratulations to you. Well, oh, thank you. <laughs> I, see, I see in the chat, some people are using the chat, which I'm, I am looking at, which I'm not supposed to, but I am. Um, does Mike have a UK website, is a question from somebody. Uh, yes, sir, we do. www, and then it's all one word, just a thought, dot club, C-L-U-B. So, just a thought, one word, dot club. We also have a new donate button. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go on Jack Club, uh, you know, WW Jack Club, we have a donate button because yet yeah, we've got loads of ideas and, and, and we've got, you know, lots of people who are interested and lots of things you want to do, but it all costs. Of course. You know, so um, we're, we're, we're going to go, you know, if anybody has got um, a, a spare bob or two, throw it in there. It'll go to a good cause. Yes, yeah, so uh, and we we started the we got a good guy uh, uh, called Mark who, who who brought us the website. You know, he's a lovely man, believes in what, believes in what we're doing, and he brought us the website in the summer. And we're going to sort of revamp it now that we're growing, and we're going to get sort of hopefully uh, uh, sort of like different facilitators around the country and. Um, we we can match them up with um you know people in addiction and and, and like they, they don't have to know anything about addiction you know because that's that, as i say that's just a symptom the cause is you know they're out of touch with themselves mm -hmm. so we've got great ideas of how to expand it it's just financially you know like everybody else you know we we we, we struggle so in terms mike in terms of the, these ideas for spreading it, i know i want to go back to when you were sharing your story because you threw a lot in there <laughs> like you know doing hr and we've just been up yes. to the addiction center and etc yes. and etc and i know when we chatted before um i think one of the important points because I, I think people that are listening again we want to inspire people and help um, yes. them to, to simulate ideas everybody's going to yes. do it in their own way but you mentioned doing evaluation forms. I think that was quite an important yes. point. You said then you've taken, you're doing evaluation forms, I believe, if I remember correctly, in your groups, and then you're taking them off and saying, look, this is, these are the results we're getting. And I think that's a really helpful point for people to maybe... Yes, I mean, that that, that's how, you know, it started really is, it, it, I'd just say to anybody out there, like Katja was saying, they don't have charities in Germany as such. But it, 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 if we talk about Britain, I would choose a charity that you were interested in, yeah? I would go along and, and unfortunately, we, you know, I, I, I didn't get anything paid for two years, you know, but, but um, and, and because they say, what is it? And of course, I, I didn't have an answer. So, but as it went along, I devised a sort of simple evaluation sheet and, and an attendance sheet. So I'd say, look, I've got something to talk about. And I would come from the angle, like I said, which is uh, I'm a motivational. So you see, if you do a program, you could be responsible. Whereas if you're just saying, I wasn't very well, what was out there didn't work, 
can I talk to people about it? You know, and if you always tell it from a personal point of view, then it's quite safe because you're just telling your story. Now, if you go in and do that and sort of sort of get people, to, you know, I used to two or three. I mean, within like three months, I was up to 18 because they tell their friends. So you could you could get an attendance sheet and then an evaluation form. And every new person that came in, you get them to fill the evaluation form in. And then, you know, after four weeks, fill it in again. And then after that, you know, fill it in again. And, you know, collate all this information. And then, you know, after a period of time, three, six months or whatever, then you can go to the charity and say, look, you know, I've got evidence here that this is working for the charity. You know, do you think you could pay me something? And they went out and they, they found money for me because it worked. And, 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 and I think... You know, there's loads of charities and, and whatever you're interested in, you know, it's just, unfortunately, you know, it's a time thing and if you're at work or something or whatever. But once you get into these places and once you start talking through principles, it's like today, we started talking at this private place and people are, my God, this is different. You know, this is different. So let's have a bit more of this. So I'd just say to people out there, just, 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 the charity you like, go in and say, can I just tell people about my, about what's happened to me over the last so many years or whatever? And you just talk about it. And, and, and just, they might have a group there or some group doing what's it. Go in for an hour. You know, I built it up, you know, half an hour, an hour, or, you know, <laughs> do two days now. <laughs> but you see, so you go in and you're just talking to people and, and about how you've changed, what you've heard, and it because it's experiential, you know, it's coming from you, then, you know, people say, oh, really? And they show interest then, and then you can build up your groups, and, and from there, you, you, you really... Now, I went into um, this company, and they're having problems going from a, um, a private... Uh, uh, a public company to a private company. And, of course, there's a lot of resistance within the workforce which, about the change. Well, I said, well, that's just their thinking about it, you know. So I said, can I just talk to them about this? So we got the, you know, the first few employees and, you know, people liked what they were hearing. And and so you can do that approach, you know. Um, there's prisons, there's, there's, there's so many organisations, but you've got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Start with yourself. <laughs> Yeah. Get your story, yeah. get your story right, and then go and talk to others with your story and see where it goes. Believe me, it'll take you, not you take it. <laughs> Does that answer? It? Yes, it did. Thank you. Well, well, the evaluation forms themselves is what I was asking about initially. I think then you've 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 shared a lot there again um and i know i think i think catch asked that question last time what so what evaluation form do you use i know that's a common question okay well i, I have a simple one but you, you've got the uh edding what is it the edinburgh and something it, there's there's an actual if you go on online i forget the name of it but there's you can actually get them off because uh, everybody's sort of now into the five the five ways of well-being and it's like it, within in England itself, there's five five hundred uh, companies signed up to well-being in the workplace. So get on the internet, start doing your research, and you know, evaluation forms. What's it? Identify what what is get you going. You know, it could be dementia, it could be whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and and you know, or, or and and remember that when we go into these places, well, I noticed. It was the it was the actual workers who needed the help as much as whoever was in the church. So once I started speaking, I mean it's like um, I was doing a, a, a sort of presentation and there was a guy there, and uh, I do this thing about you know your story, and he said, um, oh so so you want me to say that everything I think I am is just thought? And I said yes. You know, your ego, it's what you think you are. As the Buddha says, what you think you become. And he said, oh, right, because he said, ever since I grew up, my father said I was useless, I was crap, I never amounted to anything. So you saying that, that's his thoughts, not mine. And I said, exactly. He said, you know, he said, so I can be anything I want. I said, exactly. 
<laughs> you know, don't let don't let people rent space in your head. I said, you know, you can be what you want today. And but my point is, he was just running the group. But of course, when he heard that, then other you see, the workers need it as much as the clients. You know, I'm going up on one. Stop me. <laughs> you've stopped yourself. You've got that. You you're wise enough now, Mike. You're wise enough. You can stop yourself. Well, there's no questions coming yet. I'm just looking at the time. We're nearly time to wrap up. Catch it. Do you want to have a final word? <laughs> now you can fit one in. Now you can fit one in. Yes. You know, the thing is, I found it so inspirational when we had our pre-meeting. Yeah. And, and Mike, you were sharing the way you were sharing right now. You know, it's sort of, it just comes out like with all this passion and, and all this excitement and all this sort of just really, really, um, really nice to see. And I've, I've, you know, I've run into this past few weeks, I've run into this situation that there's no new people coming to do the next school. So I got a little insecure and I thought, oh my God, you know, you know, I thought I've had it now, you know, I know how to do this now. And I thought I would be doing it again. But and then things, you know, went really difficult because I got fearful and I thought, oh, I don't know what to do from April, you know, what am I going to do? But then I noticed that, um, you know, that I was just in thought. <laughs> so, so it's just a thought. And then I fell out of it and allowed myself to just be with it for, for a while. And then things started to, to occur. And I wanted to show you something physical because Mike was so kind to share his charts with me. And then I started oh. to wake up at five o'clock in the morning with an idea of how I could do my own way of showing, you know, this is thought, yeah. and feeling, connection, and how this sort of, I could explain it with a visual thing. And I bought myself a flip chart. So <laughs> and since then, two things have happened. And this is why I'm telling you this, because I was, I think when we spoke, I was a little down about, I don't know what to do. And now suddenly things have come up and there's two opportunities that I'm going to give a presentation in, in, uh, in a group and a company that I used to work for. It's like a platy plant system, a cosmetic company. And I love their products for, I don't know, over 20 years I've been involved with them. And suddenly a door opened to be doing something with them. And the second thing that just appeared was, and that was another seed that was planted, I don't know, probably or five, maybe even six years ago, I met somebody at a conference in London at the big um, uh, innate health conference there. And um, he got in touch and said, well, you know, you're German, no, you're German. I said, yeah, well, you're not in Spain anymore. I said, yeah, I'm back in Berlin. He said, oh, well, that's great. Maybe you know about some German resources because I have a client, he's coaching with me for a year already and he's really excited about the principles and wants to take it to his organization. So this was like a connection and then there was one phone call on Friday, this last Friday, and um, it, it transpired that he was actually in Berlin. He lives somewhere else in Nuremberg, but it, he was actually in Berlin. So very spontaneously, we met up for a coffee and we are in the process of planning and how to how to sort of introduce it to the to the to the um, the, the CEOs in this in this organization. So there's like suddenly it it's like opening again towards you know a new path. It's just a different thing as that's appearing, and then I can't believe I can't believe this is happening because it's just another seed right. starting to take off. And God knows where it's going to lead, but but um, it's just really exciting. And also with the the um, the inspiration of Michael, I noticed that I used to um, use it a lot, like visual flip charts and that. And I have forgotten about I had forgotten about it, and now it's coming back in a new way, in a fresh way. And, mm. and I think that's really exciting. So we can never know how it's going and it's always not about us it's always about what you know what's occurring from life really and i, I just i feel so blessed to be on this journey really <laughs> really mm. exciting i find that that's so interesting isn't it country that that, that that you know this again seeds that you've sown have come come in and you had that insecure period if you like you thought on some level, I think you thought you cracked it and you thought, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing. 
And then you, you saw that you were getting too much in your head, relax, because we had a chat last week about it, didn't we? And you relaxed, and I can't believe that's wonderful, wonderful. I just want to read it. Oh, go on, sorry. Yeah, also Mike said to me, you know, he said to me one little sentence, he said, oh, do you know how to, how, um, how many closed doors I found, you know, how, how often I, I didn't succeed or I didn't take off or whatever. And I felt like, oh my God, I'm not the only one that runs against closed doors. Because, you know, you, you're all on your own here. You're sitting here and you think you're not doing this good enough because you're having closed doors. Well, actually, you know, they need to hear us. And, you know, not everybody hears us. And I think that's just normal. And we just have to keep going and doing the things that occur to us and, and, and just see where a door opens rather than counting the ones that are closed. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. So just to finish up, there's a, people are using the chat today today versus the Q&A box. So I'm looking, um, somebody says, thank you for all your share. There's a lot to ponder. I'm so excited regarding all the work all over the world. I worked in the field of substance abuse for over 20 years and it's exciting to hear what's happening. I will check out the Jack Club. I'm retired now, but still interested in what's happening. Blessings to all. So. Lovely. It's just, it's just lovely, lovely place to end that whoever's listening to us is hearing something. Um, right, somebody anonymous, thanking both of you for telling how you sowed and sowing your seeds. Yes, yes thank you. It's been really blown by the time. I knew it would. It always <laughs> thank you for sharing, says Susan. Wonderful. So thank you. I'm going to do my little wrap up piece. Um, but again, thank you for, for your time. And I